Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to be joined by Chris, welterweight champion Chris Jenkins. Chris, how, uh, how are you coping with everything that's going on so far in, this, in the world just now? Uh, this lockdown is, it is what it is now. It's, 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 it's come a bit, it's a bit like the normal for a minute, especially in Wales. You know, I'm lucky I got free kids, so they keep me on my toes, but you now I'm missing the gym. Um, you know, I was open up for my defence on July against Johnny, but obviously that's gone to tap anyway with this. And it's just waiting to um to be able to go back in the gym. What are you doing what are you doing to stay motivated and stay fit? I think obviously you're going on your road runs and stuff like that, but do you have any other facilities around you in terms of like a bag in your back garden or anything like that? Somebody to take you on the pads or anything? Uh when it comes to um pad work and stuff, no. Uh but like where I live is quite a nice little place. It's out the way. You know, I'm running. I'm trying to get two runs in a week, possibly three runs in a week, and depending on where that, because obviously where does it like Scotland? It pisses down more than where it more than it's sunny. So I have got a little bracket up outside the back for a bag to go on. But it looks like the rain have come in now, so there's no bag work planned today. So you know, I might just do some shadow boxing, but realistically. There's no, there's not really much training going on. Well, let's talk about you. You were meant to make your defence against um, Johnny Garton, but I think Johnny's announced his retirement. Um, yeah. From boxing, but let's just jump straight to it. Eddie Hearn, as a couple of days ago, maybe last week, I think it was, has put down a little wish list of who he wants because it's going to have to be British fighters against British fighters and so on. And uh, your name came up for Conor Ben. Now. What are your thoughts on Eddie proposing that fight and wanting that fight basically in his backyard on the fight camp? Well, everyone knows me, you know, I I travel. I fight anyone anywhere, literally in their back garden. So, you know, if they can come to some sort of an agreement, my team and obviously I'm saying with Frank, you know, if they can all come to some sort of an agreement, I'll have no issue with fighting him. Do you think it's a possibility then? Because, like, Conor Bennis said that he doesn't want to fight in fight camp in and, and Eddie's proposal unless it's for the British title. You're the British champion. Do you know what I mean? So have you what, what has been said? Have you heard any sort of like contracts or anything like that? Messages from Frank, messages from Eddie or anything like that? Not yet, not? I've not spoken to... I, I, I've never spoken to Eddie and I've never spoken to Frank. The only time I met Frank was when I beat Johnny Garden. I met him that one time then, and I've obviously I met him in press conferences, but we don't speak outside of, you know, unless I see him face to face. But, you know, it was kind of like, I was, I was chilling out one evening and someone came up on Twitter, um, someone tagged me and said, what the, Eddie Owen's wish list, and Eddie Owen's trying to make his people tag me this and the thing. I said, what the fuck? I said, I haven't signed no contract for no fight. I, I'm, as far as I was concerned, I was fighting Johnny Garton, Later, later on in the year, I, 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 I don't know where I'm in the gym, so it's kind of like fucking. We don't know the tax going on. But if there was a contract offered to you, and obviously the money was right and stuff like that, you'd be happy to make a defence against somebody like Conor Ben. Oh, most definitely. You know, money, money is you know, we're, boxing is a business, isn't it? Um, and I got a family. I you know I want to get paid. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes down to everything's going to go right and I'm not, you know, I need access to a gym you know like in Wales the the lockdown's a bit more harder on us than it is in England they've easily locked on a lot more in England than they have in Wales so, like I can't get to a gym because you're not allowed to go five miles away from my house so it's it is what it is isn't it yeah definitely I've seen in some interviews as well that Connor but well Connor's been interviewed and he's basically said that he's going to go in there and I think the quote was iron you out um, he looks like he's, he's game for it he really wants a PCE he wants to looks like he wants to knock you out to win that British title what's your response to that Chris? I done it the other day and you know people are saying I like that it's basically took the finger up to him he um, can say what he wants you know I don't I, I don't I don't get him you know um He's calling me out, he's calling Gardner, he's calling Josh Kelly out, he's calling all these fighters out. 
just he, he comes across he hasn't got no respect for no one and I think I think he thinks he's better than everyone else out there and just no just sit down shut up just go on your training and the fights come off they come off I understand people like you know all this you know shouting out and all this shit on Facebook Twitter and Instagram and all this but you know at the end of the day you can shout and scream as much as you want unless the promoters can come to some sort of an agreement then the fight ain't going to happen right right now i box his head off I'll make him I'll make him like an ordinary dog you make him sorry say that again Chris you'll make him look like what sorry looking like an ordinary dog Oh, an ordinary dog <laughs> I didn't quite catch that yeah. back and forth nah I know my speech is bad isn't it but no, it's, really it's, it's, the, it's the linguistics. It's a Scottish guy and a Welsh guy, but it's, it's hard for... Uh, <laughs> and no, don't worry, Gary Locke is my coach and he's been, I've been with him now for four or five years and he still can't understand the word I'm saying. No, I, I can't, I can't. I was, I'll blame, I'm going to blame the connection that I didn't understand you. That's what I'll blame it on. Yeah, um, then. <laughs> but no, nah, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, this, is, this is all next. I just don't... You no, know, we were... I was in camp training for my defence. And then it got called off. Um, the gyms are closed. Then it got called off. And now I'm sat in the place now. Yeah, I've got the belts, but I want to defend them. What's your thoughts on fighting in front of like an, an empty sort of studio? Like, let's say that you you do end up fighting on in Eddie's backyard. There's going to be no fans there. It's going to be your team and let's say Conor Ben's team, and that is it. I know you've done it in the amateurs and stuff like that, but you've been a pro, you're a seasoned pro now. You're used to the crowds right. and stuff like that. So, what's your sort of initial feelings and reaction to fighting in front of like a six or seven, maybe even 10, 20 people, whatever it is? <laughs> I don't even sell six or seven tickets. So, <laughs> you know, it doesn't really bother me if it's behind closed doors. You know, I'll, I just do what I got to do. I just got to go, go in there, box my game plan, get a win, and get out there, get, get paid to fill my belts. But, you know, this fight is like Ben who thrives off a crowd. So, with me, it doesn't make no difference. As long as I've got my coach here, eh? um, you know, um, you know, I like that my wife here, eh? but through all this crap, this uh, kung flu, she's not going to put herself in any position to bring it back to our household, especially with the young children. So, as long as me and Gary there, eh? it doesn't bother me. <laughs> See, the thing is with Ben and stuff like that, do you think that's going to be an advantage? That'll, that'll be an advantage for you that there's going to be no crowd. Could, do you think that Ben Connor thrives on the crowd? And because you're obviously used to it, I suppose, do you think that's going to be an advantage for yourself? He said it, didn't he, in interviews, um, that uh, you know, he thrives off a crowd, they give him a little boost and stuff. So, I mean, you know, they don't, the crowd don't take the punches for you, the crowd don't throw the punches for you. It's just yourself in it. So, you know, if it's a disadvantage to him, it's a disadvantage to him, but I don't give a shit. You know, I'll fight them. Fucking hell, I'll fight my side of Frank Garden. Mm -hmm. What's it? Do you think you could stop somebody like Ben Connor? Because, I mean, like, he's a tough, tough man. He's got that... He's, <coughs> he may not be exactly like his dad, but he's a hard, hard man. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's progressing and he's got better and better each fight as well. It's plain to see and he's still only 23, so he's still learning his craft, but do you think you can go in there and make a huge statement against somebody like Connor? Most definitely. You know, um, people are saying about me with, with Garden, I was going to get stopped. They didn't get stopped. I boxed out in Belfast and against Paddy Gallagher, who I personally think is a better fighter than Ben. I think he's, he's better than him full stop. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's an aggressive fighter, kept him off on the jab, boxed it, Won the fight for square, you know, so yeah, I'm more confident going in there and getting a win and not just getting a win, but showing that there are, there are levels in this game, no matter if your father's next world champion or nothing, I will get the win. I, I, I take it that something like, if somebody was to say to you, right, 25th of July is the date you've got, Chris. Would you accept it? Because I know you're a fighter and you will accept it, but like you said, there's no gyms open. And open, and you might, you must. I, I think you're still fit, but will you be ready for a date in July? I'll get fit in seven weeks, depending if I get access to a gym. 
you know, I need sparring partner in. Um, where my sparring partners put their families at risk. Mm-hmm. You no, know, there's so much to do. There's so much to think about before saying, "Yeah, I'll take a fight." I work my I work my fucking nuts off to get where I am today. I've had so many lows in this game, from when I lost fights to taking fights last minutes to getting robbed fights, to getting cut to where I am now. You know, the ball is in my court, and my team's court. You know, but then they. Whatever Gary says will happen, in my opinion. Because if he says you're fighting, happy days. Definitely. I mean, as a, in a selfish point of view as well, I just want to see some boxing. So the sooner the better. Oh, no. I went to, I, I, I miss getting punched. You know, I got three <laughs> kids. I'm leaving my twins punch me. Like, so it is just, it is, you know, it's a tough time, isn't it? You know, for everyone, even the small all shows, and you know, nobody's making money. And you know, I'm lucky in a way. I've got a good manager, Mo Pryor. Mm-hmm. He's helping me out, keep me above water, like my own head above water. Um, you know, I'm self employed, so I'm doing bits and bobs work wise. But, like, ideally, I want to get back in the gym. Definitely. I think your last two fights was like a technical decision, wasn't it? Wasn't it? it was like a technical decision against Paddy and another technical decision. It was that a draw, I believe? Uh, yeah. Does that frustrate you that you're not getting a a clinical sort of decision or a clinical win in terms of what's happened in the last two fights? I can't help it. You know, the heads go in. Um, I'm well enough being cut through head clashes. Um, you know, got in a box, exact same. Got a win, no problem. No, no one cut. And then against Gallagher, I got cut in the fourth from a head clash. And I got cut in the eighth. But he went to the scorecards and I was still up on the scorecards. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I knew I was up by about three, four rounds. But they only gave me by a round. But I know I was more in the pocket that I was winning. And then against, obviously, Taylor then in the last fight. Liam Taylor, that's started right. good. Yeah, he started well. You know, he, I was, my, he so-called dropped me in the second round with his head and hit on the back of the head. Um, and I, I just took it to him in the second round. And I could feel him getting tired in the third and the fourth. And then... Out of nowhere, all I could see was drop his hand and just push forward like I'm not, not an attempt to throw a punch. And then it opened me right up and yeah, I think I had 24 stitches. You know, so it is a ball ache, it's a piss take, it it grinds you a bit. But, you know, after the fight, I was still a champion. So, you know, they, these boys can... I know Liam's got um, a final eliminator for the belt. So, you know, we can dance again. But for a minute now, I'm just going to see who I'm fighting, where I'm fighting, and what, what basically what's the crack. Does that worry you, though? Because I can see the scar above your, your left eye. It's moment in time. You can see the scar tissue. Stuff. Right. Does that worry you when you go into fights that that might open up again? Um, With the head clashes, obviously, yeah, it's in the back of your mind. But at the end of the day, if you're going to... You're gonna go out in the rain, you're gonna get wet, and yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's not it's not the end of the world if I get cut. It's not doing nothing for my looks, but I'm married, so I'm alright. Exactly, but you don't need to look. You don't need to look good anymore if you've got a wife, man. You're settled, done. I say we're done now. That's it. You're lucky, you. Um, Chris, final word on Conor Ben and the potential matchup for people watching this video. If it happens, I I'll, I'll show you. The levels in this game, you know, the kid, the, he needs to just calm down a bit. He's 23, he's a bit fucking brass and stuff. He just needs to calm down. Just, just don't be so aggressive. Just be chilled. But no, seriously, don't. I just show I'm a champion for a reason. And I'm not losing these belts. These belts are staying with me, whoever I box next. Definitely. I think you're going to be a traditionalist and try and defend that belt three times and win it outright before you move on to bigger and better things, I suppose? Most definitely. Um, it's a promise that I give to myself and to my kids and obviously to, a, to my late friends who've recently, well, not recently, passed away. Um, they always knew that I'd be British champion and I'm going to keep our belt and keep it in my family. The generations, it's, it has to happen. Definitely. Well... Again, like I told you, on a selfish point of view, I would like to see you versus Conor Ben because I think I'm just in need with a, an injection of boxing, live boxing, live fights. And Chris, I've seen you fight at least 
eight, ten times live, and you always you always come to fight, which is good to see. So I'd love to see. There's you always there. blood. That's there's why there's always blood when oh, you. I think I took you to the hospital in Glasgow that time. Do you remember? Aye, that's it. Aye, that, um, when I boxed Foley. That's right. Yeah. I said, yeah, that was, a, that was another one again, you know. I think after that fight, believe it or not, I nearly walked away from the sport. I nearly said, fuck this, I'm done. Um, I had good four weeks off. And then I just said, oh, I can't be fucked no more with this. I'm going to cut too much. And he goes, look. We'll... And then we look at where we are now. I got two belts. So not doing too bad. You got two belts and everyone seems to be calling your name. So you're doing all right. I'm oh Mr. Popler for once. <laughs> <laughs> You're famous, mate. You've made it. No, I'm not famous yet. I think this is this have all come out only because of the name Ben. Mm -hmm. Personally, you know, I'm not. I don't give a shit if people know me or if they don't know me. You know, I'm happy with my quiet little life, my family and stuff. But as soon as Ben was mentioned, fuck me, it's, it's all snowballed. There, have it's gone fucking nuts. That's a good thing, though, is it not? Don't bother me, like, but uh, when I beat him, then it'll be a good thing, definitely. Definitely. Well, like I say, I'm, I'm I really hope this fight comes off. I think it'll be a good all action fight and one a fan friendly fight because Connor is a fan friendly fighter, you're a fan friendly fighter, so I think it just makes sense in terms of two guys going at it. Chris, as always, it's a pleasure to speak to you, my man. Stay safe, and uh, if news breaks that you've got the fight with Ben, I'll be sure to give you a text message for another interview. Ah, you probably know before me. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm like five, five weeks behind every fucker. Well, well, if I find out, I'll let you know. I've got your number. Ah, uh, you, you let, know. yeah, you let me know. Yeah, drop me a message. Yeah, well, they want my twenty percent man manager's fee as well. If that's all right. Ah, uh, we 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 set on six. <laughs> Good man, Chris. Stay safe, man. Enjoy your family no, and speak to you soon. Take it easy. Cheers, bud. Ta -ra.